You're listening to the Small and Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 23. So on today's podcast, we have got a very good friend of mine who is annoyingly talented. She won't mind me saying annoyingly talented. The flat laid queen that is Rachel Bragg, aka Sweet Images. Now that wasn't a bad intro, was it? No, that was pretty freaking good, actually. So tell us a bit about... I'm like turning around looking for this person. <laughs> definitely you, definitely you. So, so for anyone that doesn't know you, tell um, them a little bit about you, what you do, where you hang out, not like so they can stalk you, but more, you know, geographically, tell us all about you. <laughs> not out the front of Iceland on a Thursday afternoon then. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if there's items that exist. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm Rachel Bragg from Sweet Images Photography. I'm based in the beautiful southwest in Somerset. I'm an equine and canine photographer, and I also do commercial photography for equestrian or rural-based businesses. That's it in a nutshell. Good summary. You work with some of the best rural businesses, let's, let's be honest. Um, well <laughs> if you straight onto Hi Ho's feed at all, and if not, what do you do with your life? Go now <laughs> um, at Hi Ho Silver UK on Instagram. There's a lot of Rachel's pictures on there because mm. um, you're you're very close to Hi Ho, actually, aren't you? In terms of like geographical distance as well. Yeah, ridiculously close now, and, and um, I think I've I, people might say I was stalking because I've just got closer and closer and closer, and, and now I am literally just a few miles down the road um i don't think emma mind yeah. talking i've not heard any complaints <laughs> i think that makes me a super fan i mean i was buying buying the product years ago and then as i've got closer i've got more and more and yeah and, and now i'm photographing so it's a, fun, it's a dream come true really <laughs> well rachel's work is amazing i mean it from a kind of social media point of view it makes everything a lot easier but what we're going to talk about today is something that is photography related but it's also related to content in a bigger way and we're going to talk about batching. So this mm. is when you produce a lot of different pieces of content in one hit. So tell me about your views on batching, how you got to that, that place, and also, you know, why you think it's so important. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things when you start talking to someone about batch contenting, they tend to glaze over and think, oh, God, I just don't have time for any kind of content creation. And, um, you know, the, the ensuing flap of, of, of appears it's actually um something that i've kind of got my head around myself in the last probably only probably about the last 12 months i mean i've been doing flat lays specifically probably for about hmm, two years 18 months two years and certainly with hi ho since last autumn something like that um that yeah and back in those days i would do probably what everybody else or not what most other people do, and they just grab the bits they need for that shoot, they pho photograph what they need to do, they put it to bed and they go on and they go and do something else in their life. Um, and it's actually quite time consuming to just grab everything together for a handful of pictures and then to just move on. It really can be a bit of a waste of time, really. So, and you know, there's so much pressure on us running small businesses to be all things to all people and it's not just the skill that you've got you know the reason why you run a business like for me it's not just going out with the camera and photographing things but we all know you've got to be accountants you've got to be able to be a mechanic to the car at times you've got you know um you've got to be a social media guru um you've got to be well i think mean, the list is endless really um so our time is quite short um, um and I think it, it became quite obvious that I needed to be more efficient and more effective in what I was doing in certain areas of the business. You know, the photography was sort of taking care of itself, but other areas I thought, right, I can concentrate on this. If I spend a bit more time in certain areas, I can be better at them, more efficient at them and give myself more time on the things that I really want to do. Um, and so it was actually, I think it was cool, crikey. Um, at some stage, I was probably at Hi Ho one day. I know it was a commercial customer I was working with. Um, and we were discussing the needs for the immediate campaign, but also the long term. I think, in natural fact, I think it was Hi Ho. Um, and we were looking at creating lots of different things on the same day that could be taken into the future, not, this, not just used for um, a short term campaign. So that day was pretty hectic and we shot an awful lot of stuff. Um, 
and once I'd edited everything and sent it all away, you kind of look at it and think, crikey, there's an awful lot of content there, and that's going to run and run and run and run and run. So my day with them has created something rather marvellous for them. Straight away, they've got stuff to use, and they've got stuff to drip feed into their social media or into their, into their the website, whatever, for a long time, because it's generic and it's not specific um, from a seasonal aspect or from, a, from, from any kind of timing aspect. Oh, Craig, hang on, yeah, this, this is what they call batch content. Um, so I started to just sit down and think about it. I thought, well, hang on, yeah, this really does make an awful lot of sense. Rather than just grabbing everything, like once or twice a week, shooting what I needed, putting it all away, faffing it on, going back to the desk and whatever, let's just organise, reorganise how we do things. And that's now what I do. I think as well it's interesting, even if I'm trying to do something here, um, like some flat lays or something for my blog or for my Instagram feed particularly, it's sort of, I can't think of the word for it, but if I put a little bit more time in, I get a lot more return. Because yeah. the faffing time, which I actually kind of enjoy a lot, mm. actually when you've got your idea and you've gone through all the faffing um, phases, you're more kind of in tune with it. Oh, absolutely. You're more, you're more, um, you're definitely more focused and I think you've got momentum. Mm. So you, you're, you're no longer kind of just going, oh, quickly, that'll, that'll, that'll do. You're actually, your brain starts to really engage in what you're doing and your creativity starts to flow. Um, and if you're with other people, I mean, a lot of the time I work on my own, but when I am with commercial customers that want content, um, not content, um, want input themselves, you are bouncing stuff. And when you get into that state where you're very focused on one thing, you do get, well, juices just flow and you get so much more out of it yeah, no, rather yeah. than stop, start. And I think as well, I know that you use a lot of natural light, don't you? <laughs> when you've kind of found that time when the light's good and it's mm. sort of quiet and you've got time to lay things out, mm. actually you're going to do your best work in those situations rather than thinking, oh God, I need something for my Instagram feed. Oh, it's mm. dark in here. Oh, I'll have to put an overhead. No, obviously, I know yeah. overhead lights are like the devil, but you kind of have this sort of panic of, oh, God, I need something. Oh, I'll just do something quickly. And it's never that good. Well, when I do it, yeah. it's never that good. It's never what I really want. Mm. And it just panics me. And actually, with mm. a little bit more, probably another five minutes when I was doing something before, rather than a kind of 20 minute mad panic, I could have got loads, of, loads more stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you get this really smug feeling when you've created a massive amount of stuff that you can then just kick back for, a, you know, it will depend from business to business and, and, and what your specialty is. But, you know, if I've created a load of stuff, I can just sit back and think, well, I've got at least two or three weeks worth of content there. And the pressure comes off. But actually, it's very weird because I've now got into the state where I look, if I know I've got plans ahead for some kind of um, flat lanes scenarios, I will look at the weather. Because, yeah, I work in natural light. Um, and when I'm talking to Emma at hi -Ho, when we're sort of planning a day there, we tend to look at not only our own direct availability, but we tend to look at when the weather's going to be on our side, shall we say, to the, to the best, of, um, of best of our ability in dear old weather apps. Um, and, yeah, so I do just sit down then and then look ahead and go, OK, well, Thursday, our, Thursday morning looks great. I'll plump for that and I'll just square off two or three hours. I think that's the day that I'm going to do it. Um, and, and it's quite odd really, because I then sit down and think, well, if I'm going to do it there, while I'm working, I will, um, working on something else, my brain will be thinking about what props do I need? What do I need to bring together? So that then on those two or three hours that I've put aside on that Thursday morning, I know what to go and grab straight away rather than, or oh, well, you start shooting, oh, I need this, or I need that, or what do I actually, need? and just sitting down, you've lost part of the time already. Yeah. So like anything in business, most of the battle is about preparation. So if you've earmarked a day, the next thing to do is to earmark in your head what it is you're shooting and what you need to accompany with it to go on, uh, you know, to go on and create the job properly. No, that makes perfect sense. I think as you say, the gathering the stuff together, the getting the background sorted, mm. you're going to do different things, getting that all in one place as well it means that mm. actually two to three hours you can be massively efficient rather than thinking, oh God, I need to take a shot. 
getting some bits on a table going oh no this isn't right and just yeah. but you waste so much time running around like a mad person you do yeah you really that's so true and like you said nine times out of ten what you end up photographing you're not that engaged with yourself so how can you really expect your customers to then get engaged with it i mean yeah sure it happens um, of course it does i mean no one's perfect but i think obviously no. if you can plan ahead mm. and, and make time to cre create this batch content it's really important yeah i think the thing is as well when you have I know, again, I, I know I'm not a photographer, although someone did mistake me for one the other day, which was, you know, <laughs> joke. I'm just really good with portrait mode, which I think Sophie or Rachel taught me. So it's all, you know, and although I was teaching Ruth the other day. Um, but the thing is as well, when you've actually set up a, um, a flat lay, let's say, it's not mm. just about taking one picture, because batch content isn't just going, okay, one shot, okay, clear it down next. How do no. you create additional content uh, in the batch work style from each thing that you do yeah it is it is generally just about angles and slightly tweaking how you how and where you take the photograph um i frequently well once a month i will change my facebook cover and it will be um based on one of my clients portrait shoots and then you know selection of their pictures in an in a flat lay kind of environment now when i and that's the that's the mission is to get the month's um, cover picture but then what goes into the background with that is to then get as many different kinds of shots with it that can be used in different ways um, so yeah I do and I've always said this when I've taught flat lay or spoken to anybody and given them the tips for for how I do things and I'm not the only person out there but you know um, you when people flat are lay team, flat lay team, <laughs> well make it. we're in a small <laughs> circle but yeah um, so you can do your stereotypical overhead shot, but then I tend to come down and do slightly different angled shots as well. Um, and it's just, and it can literally be just moving the camera an inch in a different angle, a different direction. And it is kind of the same picture, but it's not the same picture. And if your flat lay is big enough, you can shoot it from so many different ways that it's just a nice different, you know, it's just a, if there's just a slight difference and each one is relevant in its own way and each one can be used in a different way from a content per point of view and each one can be repurposed so one story can create you overheads um what we call um squat for the shot <laughs> pictures which you'll see a lot with um hi-ho um where it's kind of almost at a 45 degree angle don't like the sound of that <laughs> it's got, can burn, can burn those thighs. <laughs> um, and it, it, yeah, just one setup can create can create you an awful lot. Don't just think, right, I've got my overhead shot, bang, I'm off. Don't take loads of different um, angles, loads of different pictures, because within there there'll be some gems that you can just keep using. And I think as well, you said about having the big flat lays. I think mm. as well. It may have been Sophie, but she did a big flat lay of something. I think it was Sophie. She did a big flat lay of something. I've seen you do it as well, where you have a big overhead shot and then you focus in on the specific things. So you're talking about specific yeah. things is generic as well. So yeah. how do you, and again, that's a really good way to create a lot of content from one piece of work. Yeah. So, so an example, sorry, so an example of that would be, um, actually my, my Christmas flat lay was massive, absolutely enormous. And the general, point of that picture was to create a Christmassy atmospheric image based on my portrait photography but kind of jazzing it up and you know um, for gift vouchers and, and that kind of thing so you got this overall picture but then when you scan down and you've just picked up on say um, the box uh, the wooden box uh, that that's created, looks like a, a storybook that my um, prints go out into my portrait customers you focus in on that, then you've got a different kind of content from the original overall big picture. Um, or I might take a picture, within it there was thing, I think there was um, envelopes being posted out to customers with their gift vouchers in. So you can shift over to that and that becomes content in its own right because, oh, I'm off to the post office kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you, you've got the ability to go generic or specific and the same with hi-ho you know we can do this overall um, above shot of everything that's in there 
but the next shot might be just focusing on um, a very small portion of the jewellery. And if it's accompanied by another brand, you know, um, I think there was one with an Albion scarf not that long ago, you can then um, showcase that, that part of, um, that part of the, the picture as well. And it gives flexibility. And actually at the time, that is, I'm just now belittling photography, but when you set it all up, actually taking those few extra shots is kind of the worst nothing. minutes, isn't it? And God's, yeah, it's, it's nothing. Yeah. But having to set it all up from scratch again is just... Yeah. Yeah, it's just a whole world of pain that you just don't need to get involved in. No, absolutely. And it's just that little bit of sort of thinking ahead, as you say. So when we think about batching content, then obviously we've had a good old chat about it, but what top tips would you give anyone who's sort of thinking, actually, this makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm already thinking, well, that's my afternoon, um, because I know that, especially when we, we I know, um, I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but it was, obviously we recorded it in January, which is when Sophie Callahan's got her Instagram challenge, which is causing mm. no end of stress. Mm. Um, damn her. But <laughs> looking at her list, I could actually probably do flat lace for most of them if I applied my mind to it and it would probably take me a couple of hours and I'd have it all done rather than thinking each day oh my god I haven't done this so what would your top tips be for batch content and creating batch content okay first first thing is what are you trying to achieve what is your plan as, uh, as in um what do you want to shoot have a have a have a clear plan in your head as to why it is you're going to get everything else out everything out to shoot with in the first place once you know what you're shooting um work out what else you can shoot at the same time that will deliver you more flexibility and more content for the future and add that to your thought process um, then be ruthless as in be ruthless with your time get your diary out see where you've got a gap and make time for it. I know we talk an awful lot in photography about natural light and um, making the best of it. You can do it all with studio lights um, as well. But one of the biggest things to not get hung up about with this kind of small business social media content is you don't need a DSLR camera. Your phone, will, yeah, your phone is absolutely amazing and your phone will take into account far more um, than you actually think it will. Um, times when it's really tricky light for us with a DSLR, the camera, the phone cameras go, don't know what your problem is. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are very, some, well, the modern ones are so clever. Um, but I suppose as photographers, we technically like to try and work it out ourselves, whereas the phone, a lot of the time, will just go, yep, yeah, no, that's fine, bang. So a top tip there is don't panic. You do not need a fancy camera for this kind of Thing. You can do batch content uh, with creation from a photographic aspect with your phone or with a um, standalone camera. So don't panic. Um, and then for me, obviously I'm talking flat lace, but you can attribute this to any kind of um, photography. But start thinking about props. Have some props to hand that you can drag in to make your thing whether it's a service or a product stand out a bit more or have a mo more cohesive story can you talk to us a little bit about props because obviously let, i mean let's pick some scenarios shall we so like we, yeah, right. we have yeah. a no. <laughs> i have <laughs> yeah okay. well obviously a lot of country and horsey people listen to this so yes. let's do a riding school let's do a riding school okay fine so we're just going to do a product shoot for the, um, do you want a product shoot or, or for the whole, for, of the riding school in general? Um, let's That's do, point one, what are you shooting? <laughs> okay, let's say I just want some nice content to promote the fact I have got some special events coming up, some, you know, like um, demonstrations and that kind of thing. Okay, right. Um, and for the purpose of this, I'll do this as a flat lay rather than as pure product photography yeah, type thing. So I would... Um, it's a riding school, so I um, if let's say let's say we are promoting a um, own a pony day, something like that at the local yeah. riding school. Does that work? Yeah, that works for me. So I would suggest that we need things such as riding gloves, um, maybe a, a whip, um, a numner or saddlecloth, something along those lines. 
um, polos, apples, a bit of straw. And these are things that are just popping off the top of my head. And then if someone's got the actual advert for own a pony day, you could, you could incorporate that, but you don't obviously need it. And it's just bringing together a selection of things that make sense in that environment to then um, help enhance whatever it is you're trying to promote and get people to engage with. So these um, are things that you've got lying around the house, lying around the yard. They're not yeah. you have to necessarily. I know you can obviously go out and buy beautiful props, and I think yeah. if you're really into it, there's definitely a good case to do that. Yeah. But you can just start by thinking about things that make sense to the day. Precisely, and there's you know um, th that goes on and on from there. You really don't need to go out and buy props. Um, a lot of things are in your house. Full stop. You know, if you're I don't know, let's say you're, um, you're doing a photograph of a um, charity cake store, something like that. Um, yeah, I like this, we like we say, Yeah, we all love cake, so let's go for, yeah, the local know, Rotary Club. Rotary Club are doing a baker cake day for charity. So how would you photograph that? Well, you've got, You've likely you've got a bowl in your house and a wooden spoon in your house and you've probably got some flour and some ice and sugar and you've probably got a wire tray and if you haven't your mum has and you know you just pull things together and it's not difficult you haven't got to go out and you know unnecessarily expend it's unnecessarily spend on something um yeah it's just a case of quite often look around your yard grab stuff that makes sense, look around your house, grab stuff that makes sense. You know, Christmas was all about half of my tree decorations were in my, <laughs> were in my um, flat lace for Christmas. Um, and I'm quite lucky actually when, when I do go to Hi Ho for their stuff, Emma has just got like a house that's a treasure trove. Everything <laughs> makes sense in there. So, um, but yeah, you don't need posh and you don't need expensive. You just need things that are relevant. I think one thing I do this, but I'm not sure if it's correct. So it's good up to, to, to ask actually is when I have got a flat they taken up, um, set up, I take yeah. a lot of pictures yeah. them because I have this sort of, I don't think that until you've kind of zoomed in and messed around with it, you get to see actually what you've taken. So I do keep checking, but I take the same and similar shots over and over again. Uh -huh. A, is that right? And B, what do you, what would you advise people to do? I mean, when I was briefly the other day, I was taking loads, I was showing her portrait made on her phone and I took loads of pictures. Do you, I only take one. And I say, no, no, I take a load and then delete them so I can see the best one. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if it's a good tip. It's probably the wrong thing to do. Rachel, help us. <laughs> well, <laughs> you wouldn't be alone in doing that. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, <clears throat> There are no rights and there are no wrongs with this as such, um, particularly with flat lay, because what works for you is all that's important. And if you think you're portraying the message and your customers historically like what you're taking pictures of, then it doesn't really matter. Um, the answer to how many pictures do you take, crikey, that's been running in photography for years and years and years, and will continue to run for years and years and years. Um, we have the, the purest, um, photographers who still use film where every shot is um, money spent you know you, you've only got so many images you can take on a, on a reel of film so they are quite cagey about when to press the button and then there's the digital era where yeah, you just click 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 and it's somewhere in the monster there's, there's something that's fine but actually I don't think it's really all that relevant in, in most cases certainly not with with the flat lays it is funny actually um, I will, t I will just move ever so slightly and then suddenly I go, oh yeah, no, that is the one. But yeah, keep an eye on the back of your camera or, or your phone. What's right is only what's right for you. Don't panic about it, don't stress. If you have taken 20 shots to get one or two that you're happy with, that's fine. Because if you're batch contenting, that's fine. You know, you are, you're spending time specifically to do that. But if you start, if you're getting frustrated that, you know, you set everything up, you take one picture or two pictures or three pictures and, and you're not very happy with it and you think, oh, I can't be bothered to leave it to one side and then you come back and try another day. No wonder you're getting fed up with all that malarkey. Mm -hmm. But no, I, don't, I honestly don't think there's a right and wrong way to, to how many pictures you should and shouldn't take. You take the ones that you're comfortable with and you're ready to promote with. No, that's, that's a good point. I think what you said about the phones is really important. So obviously I'm not a photographer. I use my phone for everything. I don't even, I mean, I'm not really allowed to touch your camera, am I? 
No, no, you scared the living daylights of me when you got about six foot from it from the last time. As, as my six. eyes lit up. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, no, no. I think Sophie and I were about to have panic attacks because there's <laughs> that two of our cameras on yeah. a table. You approach them like, no, step away from the cameras. And with good reason, I have no idea what I'm doing. But um, you can do an awful lot with your phone, as you say. So you don't can. feel that's a limiter. Not in the slightest, oh, for goodness sake. Um, and, and it's quite funny, actually, talking to people about what camera you've got. Um, and Not camera, there we go, see? What phone you've got, based on what camera it has. You know, because they are amazing these days. You really don't need to worry about it. And, you know, that's actually one of the first points I always make when I'm sort of talking to people about flat lay in particular. Just get your phone out. It's fantastic. And actually that point was proven the other day when you guys were planning at a meeting. Yeah. And how many amazing pictures came out of that. Every single one of them was on a camera yeah. phone. You didn't have any cameras there. No. And I think as well, again, I'm horrific at editing. Um, I, Sophie set up something on my phone quickly and I took a picture of her when she came to do my photo shoot and I use that for everything. But mm. you can actually get really good apps on your phone. I mean, it's not about the app, it's about the skills that you've got to make it do what you want it to do. But mm. you don't even need to transfer it to a computer to edit either. No, that's right. There are some amazing apps out there now. You know, you, you can even get... But you can get Photoshop and Lightroom put on your phone as well if you want to get really techy. Yeah, um, you don't need to spend thousands of pounds to get very, very good engaging images. I think that's really exciting, especially because our appetite and our need for images is so much greater than it ever, ever was. Yeah. You know, if you put on a bad picture on Instagram, it's not going to do what you wanted to do. If you no. put on a a Facebook post without a picture it's not going to perform anywhere near as well as it should be and no. websites are such a big deal now um I mean I think adverts are actually you know when it used to be that you would take the picture for the advert that would be like the thing whereas mm. now really pictures for adverts I appreciate they still need to happen but it's the everyday mm. consumption of mm. what you need which is such a um a, not a stress but it can be because I mean some clients I work with we post three times a day on one platform and once or twice down the other so potentially that well that's what best case three images worst case five images a day mm. yeah and if you're having to spend a huge amount of money or having to set up a shoot for each of those images you would mm. never ever be able to achieve what you need to achieve no exactly and that's why batch content in just the con content creation is is your lifesaver really um, it just makes you far more efficient, far more effective, and it gives it frees up your time to be able to do other things within the business that you know. Whether it's whether you're then planning for some strategic reason for something that's going on in your business, you know, whatever it is, you can get on with that on a day to day basis. Let's be honest, we've got so much to do. You don't want any one thing to be draining your time or your resources or your you know your, your brain capacity, whatever. It's a lovely, lovely feeling having those images there so you write a blog and you don't have to go searching for an image you know you've got something relevant it's a very oh, nice yeah feeling. yeah ab absolutely and I, and it's quite and it's a really nice feeling for me actually to walk away and know that i've given a client loads of capacity um you know two or three two or three hours can achieve so much because like i say you and anyone anyone product that i'm photographing for them won't be photographed once or twice, there's probably 20 or 30 pictures of that one product from various different angles, or I might have changed some of the props. And that's it, you move, yeah, exactly, move the focus point, whatever. So you can very easily find yourself with an awful lot of content in a, in a short period of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pro-batching, and now I'm thinking that's what I need to do, you know, all day. I've got a few other things to do, but I'm now excited about flat lays. Um, Don't let it take over your life. <laughs> it is. I do actually, I'm not good at it, but I really enjoy it. I think it's a really nice creative outlet, and I yeah. really like the idea of being able to produce all this stuff in advance. Because yeah. when you're running around like a mad person, I know before I started pressing record, I said that this month I'm out and about a lot, which I'm really happy about. Yeah. But it does mean that the other stuff I do day to day for my own yeah. social does get kicked really hard because yeah. it's not prioritised. But if I've got all that stuff ready, mm. it's not that much to worry about because I can get it all done. Which mm. is great. So if you, oh, yeah. 
are looking for any flat lay inspiration, you've got to go and check out Rachel's page. Also, I know I work with Hi Ho, and obviously I know Rachel worked with Hi Ho, but the Hi Ho page is a really good example as well because Rachel's done a lot of amazing work there. But tell us where you can, where we can find, or where are you on all of the things? And also, your blog has got some beautiful flat lay images in, and you talk about the amazing tiny, the orange horse. So cool. you know, all the places. Okay, so I'm Sweet Hyphen Images Photography. That's my name as such. So, um, and you do need the hyphen, I'm afraid. So on um, Instagram, I'm sweet underscore images underscore UK. I think that's the same for Twitter, although I'm not very active on Twitter, I have to say. Facebook, I'm sweet images photography UK. Um, and then the website is sweet hyphen images dot co dot UK. So those are probably the main places you'll find me hanging out. Um, but as you say, there's stuff of mine on Hi Ho. There's also quite a bit lately from Mackenzie and George. Yes, there is. And Smart Grooming seem to have quite a lot of mine stuff at the moment. So, Bob, so yeah. I know it's at Mackenzie and George on yeah. Instagram. What is it? Just at Smart Grooming. Awesome. I believe it is. Yeah, I think it is just at Smart Grooming. So. Perfect. And they do lots of lovely, as in they're they're kind of whereas Hi Ho and Mackenzie and George are quite lifestyle. They obviously Smart Grooming are full on horsey so it's good to look at yeah yeah full on it quite fast aspects there too mm. well thank you very much i'm really excited about cracking on with some batch content now and i know that so i'm not sure when this is going to go out um we probably will have done the high ho and co day or it'll nearly be here um mm. but i'm very excited about creating a load of content around there as well because we've got so many amazing products people opportunities and locations that mm. My little phone is going to be groaning with stuff after that. Exactly. That is just a full day of batch, batch opportunity, really. So, and you'll walk away going, I'm seriously smug. I've got myself sorted for weeks and weeks to come. No more panicking when I sit down with laters. It's all there ready to go in. Full of cake and smug. That sounds like yeah. perfection. <laughs> well, thank you very much for letting me torment you. Um, obviously I'll put all your contact details and where you are in the show notes if anyone's listening and didn't catch all the hyphens and underscores um, yeah. I will go, go the world of social media and trying to get your brand name across yeah <laughs> um, but if you go and have a look at my, my blog it'll be on there um, there'll be a sweet images and a, this podcast show notes so go and look there thank you very very much for letting me torment you uh, that was oh, really fun I hope the babbling made sense to someone <laughs> it did it made a lot of sense to me